Hi there, and welcome to Chalk Session. I am your host, Brian Griffiths. This is the show here at the Duck Pen where we analyze and review and critique political campaign ads. So join us on this week's show. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And let's take a look at this week's ad. On this week's episode of Chalk Session, we are going to analyze a new ad from John King. He was the Secretary of Education in the Obama administration. He is running for governor of Maryland. And this ad is called Truth. I don't believe it's running on statewide television. I think it's running on streaming devices such as Hulu and YouTube and stuff like that. But still, it is a one-minute spot. It could be a television ad if he so choo- chose to to run it on broadcast television and cable television. So let's go ahead and get started with this week's ad, Truth, from the John King for Governor campaign. School curricula have become openly racist. Nothing, nothing says this race is focused on Maryland, like starting off with Tucker freaking Carlson. Um, Tell me that you're a critter of Washington without telling me that you're a critter of Washington. Critical race theory is bigoted. Then we go straight to Ted Cruz, who you may have noticed is not running for governor of Maryland or is from Maryland or don't know when the last time he's been to Maryland is. It is a lie. Some far right politicians want to erase my story. What does this have to do with anything? No far right politicians probably give two dams about who John King is and what his his story is. OK, I mean, this is this is pandering. That is just taken to an extreme level. And I understand that John King, nobody knows who John King is in Maryland. He has no connections in the Democratic Party. Nobody. I mean, secretary of education is not a not a sexy position in the cabinet. He's not well known. But boy, howdy saying starting with far right politicians wanting to erase the story. By the way, no far right politicians were included in here. I mean, Ted Cruz is a patsy who just sucks up to Donald Trump. And, and Tucker Carlson, hell, he's a chameleon who will just tell you whatever you want to hear and will just follow the ratings. So, you know, this is not off to a good start, is my point. The truth is, my ancestors who were enslaved in this cabin in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Were- now, this part is great. I love the fact that he goes to the cabin, the cabin that his, his ancestors were enslaved in. It's got a Maryland connection in Gaithersburg. This is great. If he had started the commercial here, this we're talking about a completely different, um, different feel, a different tone to the app. Part of building this country. The truth is today's gaps in health, wealth and criminal justice are tied to the history of slavery. OK, now now we're kind of kind of moving, moving a little far afield here. Um, if you, you know, when you start talking about health care and wealth, you know, are you talking about them just for the African-American community? You're talking about them for all of them, you know, and, that, and I think that's that's what the question is here. You know, we immediately go to this race baiting uh, by talking about slavery and then segregation and redlining, as you see on here, all of things, which, of course, were terrible. But there are also things that are of the past and issues with health care, with wealth go far beyond uh, one particular, you know, one particular race of people. There are people who are suffering from issues with health care, with wealth creation. Those things exist in Appalachia, too. But you don't have nearly the African-American population out in Cumberland that you do in other parts of the state. So to just immediately jump into um, you know, just immediately to jump into to these issues is just a weird start to the act. Segregation and redlining. And the truth is, my family went from being enslaved in that cabin to serving in the cabinet of our nation's first black president. Which in and of itself is a great story. It's like this this commercial keeps jumping around from, hey, this part's really stupid. Why is this in here? To, hey, this part's really good and part of a part of a good part of a good um, inaugural ad. As a teacher, school principal and President Obama's secretary of education, I know the truth matters. We're strong enough to acknowledge injustice and see the power of progress. I know that Maryland's future depends on the strength of our public schools. It was amazing teachers who saved my life when both of my parents passed away. It couldn't be a better time to have an educator as governor, and that's our truth. I hate the end of this. I hate the end of this ad so much, and I tell you why. It's because the part where he says it's our truth, Truth does not have ownership. Truth is truth. You don't get to say that something is our truth or something is my truth. Truth is truth. 
Um, honestly, if you if you if you piece together this ad, if you move the pieces of it around, you would actually have a really good ad. Um, and <laughs> You know, I think it's unfortunate that it took the tone that he that he did by all of this. Just, um, you know, with, with with turning it into to, into a race issue, turning it into a divisive race issue, as opposed to just talking about his resume and talking about the need for an educator. Because you know what? There are people who support public education of all races, all color and all creeds. And instead, you know, King is focusing directly on appealing to to African Americans and appealing to the woke demographic who are self hating white people. Why don't we uh, come back in a second and I'll just grade this ad for you and tell you what I did and did not like about it. So let's go ahead and break down a little more of this ad from from John King entitled Truth. Um, one it juices the base. I think that's good for him. Uh, obviously, not being a Democrat, it doesn't really do much for me, but it definitely juices his base. And makes it more likely that um, those on the far left are going to be inclined to support him in the gubernatorial primary, or the Democratic primary, that is. And again, when you don't have any support in the Democratic Party, when nobody knows who the hell you are, it's important to get out in front and make sure that you appeal to the base. The second thing I really like is that it highlights his education experience. So much of our politics in the state of Maryland have been focused so heavily on public education And the fact that King was an educator, the fact that King was the secretary of education, the Obama administration, warts and all. um, I I think that really plays into the message that he's talking about here as it relates to education. And it really plays into the fact that that is an issue that drives voters, particularly Democratic voters, in a Democratic primary. The third thing I liked was the cabin scene. I think that going to that cabin, going to the... Um, the place where his ancestors were enslaved in Gaithersburg is a very powerful message. And I think that that, um, that really, really hits home as you, as you go through the commercial. There are a couple of things I didn't like about it, though. The first is the fact that it's just so, so damn cynical. Um, you know, it, it's smart because it juices the base, but it's cynical because his story is not what people are objecting to. When they object to critical race theory, um, it's a Mott and Bailey argument. He's talking about well, he's trying to say that he is just talking about advancing his story when, in fact, um, critical race theory is a drastic um, change in, in the way our education curricula is, is structured and is a drastic change in, in the way that um, relations between the races are structured. But you can only see the 1619 project, the fact that that won so many awards despite being completely bunk. Um, you know, you can you can see where that is uh, that is problematic, and that leads into the fact that it's a divisive ad. It doesn't try to unite people of different races, colors, and creeds. It tries to divide people, and it tries to make King look like the candidate for African Americans. And if that's his, if that's his goal, I okay. But it certainly, you know, there are still a large number uh, of white progressive voters who need to vote in the Democratic primary, and you know, it, it's certainly not going to appeal to independents and Democrats, the people who still he'll still need to to attract um, if he wins the the primary election and goes on to face Kelly Schultz in the general election. The third thing I don't like is this R-Truth reference. I mean, that is just such crap. There is no R-Truth. There is no my truth. There is no your truth. There's just truth. And if you're trying to talk about R-Truth, it means that you're not telling the truth. And I have a serious, serious beef with that. And the last part is the fact that it's two completely separate commercials. It's an editing issue. You have two commercials that are basically interspersed with one another. You have this this very politically charged commercial that is, you know, trying to appeal to the far left. Well, at the same time, it's interspersed with this very uh, powerful story about, you know, an African-American man who overcame a lot in his ancestor's life to become secretary of education to the first African-American president to you know be an educator and, and to tie all those education themes together. There's a good ad in here, 
but there's so much crap surrounding it that it kind of regresses it to the mean. If this ad is intended to get people talking about John King and the Democratic primary, it'll do it, but at what cost when appealing to the broader electorate? I give this ad a C. That's all the time we have on this episode of Chalk Session. Again, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you have an ad that you want us to analyze in one of these Chalk Session videos, please feel free to email us at theduckpin at gmail.com. For all of us here at the Duckpin, thanks, and we'll see you next time. The truth is, my ancestors who were enslaved in this cabin in Gaithersburg, Maryland, were part of building this country. And the truth is, my family went from being enslaved in that cabin to serving in the cabinet of our nation's first black president. As a teacher, school principal, and President Obama's secretary of education, I know that we're strong enough to acknowledge injustice and see the power of progress. I know that Maryland's future depends on the strength of our public schools. It was amazing teachers who saved my life when both of my parents passed away. It couldn't be a better time have an educator as governor 